Hello, here's a quick warning before we jump in. As you may have gathered from the video's title, we're going to be talking about Pillars of Eternity for our big RPG time. Excellent. Anyway, to be a little bit more specific, we're looking at the introduction to Pillars of Eternity, and so there will be a number of spoilers from roughly the first 30 minutes of the game. Worth bearing in mind if you're yet to play Obsidian's latest or haven't already cleared this first area right here. So what's special about this particular opening? A caravan travelling through a fantasy world getting trapped in an ancient slash mysterious ruin doesn't sound especially groundbreaking for the genre, and well, yeah, it isn't really, but as a backdrop for a number of decisions that you were asked to make, it works well enough, and that's the part that I find interesting. That's why I want to talk about, the way in which Pillars of Eternity very quickly shows the player the kind of impact that their choices can have upon the world and the characters around them. Because that's going to be a theme throughout this whole 50, 60, I don't know, 70 hour marathon of an adventure. Of course it is, look whose name is on the box. Actually, you might not have a box, I think. Wasn't that one of the pricey Kickstarter rewards? Pillars of Eternity, like most RPGs worth playing, is all about giving you the necessary room to roleplay, and then changing around that as a result. It wants you to feel like your choices matter, like they carry some amount of weight, and the introduction manages to convey that really well, I think. As you start the game with your newly made hero of choice, you won't yet be able to create any additional characters or mercenaries to fill out your party as you fancy. That comes slightly later on, given you have the goal to pay for it anyway. So yeah, Yes, the first couple of companions that you'll encounter will prove especially important. Without them, you'll likely have trouble even surviving the first dungeon you're blown into. You're, you're going to need them, and alright, even if you don't, even if you can scrape through on your own, they're characters, real characters with their own personalities and voice acting and opinions about things. I usually consider all of that quite welcome in my RPGs. Companions that will share their thoughts about your character and what you're up to and the decisions you've been making, that can feel extremely important. And yet the thing that most impressed me about these first two characters, Kalisha and Hyoden, these characters that do feel important, is that you can get them killed off really easily. Like, properly killed off. In fact, if you make the wrong call when you first return to camp and find Hearden, the friendly merchant, being held hostage by some of the locals, he may never get the chance to join your party in the first place. I'm sure most players will avoid that particular outcome if they care to, although it is still quite likely that he'll be harmed in the process, but the fact that this possibility is even there, that a potential party member can die because you picked the wrong dialogue option, especially this early on, well, that teaches you to approach both the dialogue and those excellent choose-your-own-adventures-styled boards with added caution. So, depending on how successfully you've dealt with that entire exchange, you'll be starting your first proper dungeon with either a full-strength party, including both Kalisha and Hyoden, or potentially just Kalisha if things have gone south back at camp, or, as I also mentioned before, Kalisha and an injured Hyoden. Now that final combination presents another interesting dilemma. Your man Hyoden, who's just had a sword dragged across his chest, is feeling a bit unwell, and he'll ask you as the responsible party leader if the group can stop and rest. At which point Kalisha jumps in and explains that she doesn't really like that idea quite as much. She thinks it's probably a better call to just push ahead and escape from the dungeon nice and quickly instead, rather than leaving the group vulnerable to attack. You can go along with her suggestion, sure enough, and it's arguably the best course of action that you can take, despite the debuff that you'll have to deal with. But it's not clear that he'll make it initially, it's not clear that that is the right call. From what you've seen up to this point, you may well suspect that if you don't let him rest, he'll probably die, potentially bleeding out from the wound he's received or some other horrendous fate. So you'll likely want to pop along to the left here and set up camp just for a little while anyway. That seems like a risk, you'll know that, but it's also one that's arguably worth taking to save one of your party's lives. Now if you do opt for that particular course of action, well the good news is that he then makes a speedy recovery and will be back in fighting shape by the time you set out again. The bad news, however, is Kalisha. Still pretty adamant about the whole leaving the dungeon thing, she'll have pinched your water canteens and run off whilst you sleep. And yet, you may harbour hopes of catching up with her at first, but these hopes are quite quickly dashed when you find her corpse in the middle of what can only really be described as quite an obvious dungeon trap, equipped with glowing floor panels and everything. I mean, why, who would, why would you walk across that? And this right here is exactly where I ended up on my first playthrough, a party member dead, the very first character to join my party at that. 
which may seem off-putting, but I don't think so. I think it's strangely impressive. What initially felt like quite a generic starting area had managed to tell a much more interesting story than I'd been expecting. A story in which my character had made the wrong call, and a companion, who as far as I knew might have stuck around for the entirety of the game, was dead. Dead in the middle of a very brightly lit dungeon trap. Pillars of Eternity felt sort of more dangerous after that. So yes, a very appropriate introduction to a game like this. You'll leave that first dungeon with a good taste of what Pillars is all about. Role-playing, choices, and real consequence. Great, just great. Well, well, I say real consequence. As you walk out into the open, having made your daring escape, perhaps even with both party members alive and well if you played it right, Obsidian do have one more final lesson to teach you. And it's the same lesson that Telltale have demonstrated over and over again throughout the Walking Dead series. Player-driven narrative, particularly when it comes to characters being potentially killed off at different points throughout a storyline, has some serious limitations. And it's something we all sort of understand, albeit begrudgingly. If Kalisha and Hyodan could continue onwards as your companions for the remainder of the game, that's an awful lot of script writing and voice acting to work on despite the fact that a bunch of players, myself included at this stage, might never see it. That's an expense that might prove quite difficult to justify, but man, I can't help but feel there was maybe a better way to clear that hurdle than this. That's just brutal. I mean, they, were, they weren't even on screen, and we tried so hard to keep them... Ugh. The first 30 minutes or so of Pillars of Eternity are excellent. I had a great time. They let you feel like your experience with the game has played out just a little bit differently to everybody else's, and they then quickly remind you that this is probably quite unfeasible outside of the more superficial stuff. Ah, sorry about that. Um, it, it's a great game. With Pillars of Eternity, we strive with every level to both evoke the essence of the beloved Infinity Engine games, as well as introduce something new and engaging for players to experience in the world of Aora. Hey, why don't you check out some of these other videos if you're about? Look, we've got an M board. Isn't this nice? Lovely stuff. Ooh, what's this? Is that a video about Assassin's Creed Chronicles China? Maybe it is. Why don't you give it a... You're not going to click that one, are you? Uh, what about this one here? A new weekly show. Blimey, that sounds fun. Johnny and I get put in a coffin. What splendid tomfoolery. Please?